Hey everyone, this is Emily with Snake Discovery, and today I'll be talking about a snake that I wish we saw more in captivity because they truly are amazing, the Woma Python. Woma pythons are native to Australia, where you can find them in grasslands, shrublands, and woodlands. Their diet consists mainly of appropriately sized mammals, but they are known to eat birds and also some reptiles, including venomous species of snakes. The Woma python, unbelievably, is immune to their venom. They live in such a hot area in Australia that they will only touch a few inches of their belly to the hot sand at a time in order to prevent burning themselves. Walmas spend a lot of their time in underground burrows where there's not enough room to actually grab their prey and coil around it to constrict it. So in order to kill their prey, they have to instead pin it against the side of the tunnel until it suffocates. This method of hunting is not as effective as actually constricting their prey. So when you come across a woma python in the wild, you usually see quite a few scars along their body from their prey trying to defend itself. The scientific name for Roma python is Aspidites ramsayi, and their genus, Aspidites, refers to their uh, symmetrically shaped head scales. And the second half of their name, ramsayi, was named after an Australian zoologist. Womas are one of only two species of snakes that are found in the Aspidites genus, the other one being the black-headed python, which is highly sought after. It's a beautiful snake, and you can kind of see how they're related, right? Although most species of pythons have heat-sensitive pit organs along their up and or lower lips, the Woma python and the black-headed python are a couple of the only species of pythons that do not have those pit organs. Womas get to around four and a half feet long on average, but there are some outliers out there that are around seven feet long. So they don't get terribly large usually, which is one of the reasons why they actually make really good pet snakes in captivity. These snakes have quite a color range in the wild from light brown to nearly black. This is the coloration that we usually see in captivity though. Unfortunately, due to habitat loss and destruction, the Woma python is now listed as an endangered species on the IUCN red list. There have been some captive breeding and releasing efforts that are underway, but the releases are failed attempts because the released pythons get eaten by the mulga snake more often than not, which is one of their natural predators in the wild. Thankfully though, Woma pythons breed quite readily in captivity, so there is still a chance for their future as long as we can conserve what habitat they do have left in the wild. When Woma pythons were first introduced in the pet trade into the United States, they were imported illegally from Australia. Australia is really strict on their exporting laws, which is a good thing because they're protecting their native uh, reptiles and amphibians, but people still found a way to get them into the States even though it was against the law. But now that they've been breeding so long in the United States, they are now legal to own. This is our female Woma python. She's about two and a half years old now, still has a little bit of growing to do before she's big enough to breed, but we do have a male that when he's also big enough, we will be pairing these guys up and hopefully produ be producing some, some babies. Some people, when they buy a pair of young snakes with the intent to breed them, will power feed those snakes, which means they'll feed them like every three days in order to make them grow faster, and then they can breed sooner. But that will drastically cut back the lifespan of that snake, so we've chosen to just feed them normally, just about once a week for them, and although she won't grow as fast as a power-fed Wilma would, she'll still be healthier in the long run. Here is our male. He's a little bit smaller. He's also a little bit more rambunctious than our female. He's always on the move, it seems. But he has these beautiful darker colors to his scale, and it kind of reminds me of a black-headed python with those dark bands. Although he has an orange head, which gives it away that he's not a black-headed python. In captivity, Woma pythons are excellent pet snakes. I would even go as far as to say that they make really good beginner snakes even. You treat them just like a ball python, to be honest, since they like warm, dry conditions, but with a humid retreat or a humidity box when they go into shed. But they make excellent pet snakes for various different reasons. First off, they're great eaters. They're typically not very picky, and this female will actually eat out of my hands if I let her. Second, they don't get very large. They only get around four and a half to maybe five feet for a larger female, so you can house them in a 40 gallon aquarium or an equivalent sized bin. Next, I mean, they are just beautiful snakes and you can see there's a little bit of difference in between individuals, but you just can't beat that pattern and the color, especially that beautiful orange head and their orange bellies. And finally, they are handleable snakes. They don't mind being taken out and held. Some can be a little more standoffish or twitchy than others, but with regular handling sessions, they calm right down just like these guys did. 
The only drawback is we don't see these available for sale as often as we do like ball pythons or corn snakes. And that's because people uh, still have not bred them in such large quantities to make them as readily available. And as a result, they are typically a little bit more expensive as well, running at around $250 for a baby Woma python. It's totally worth it though. I think they're worth every penny because of how unique the snake is and how great of a pet they make. So hopefully I've taught you something new about a really cool species of snake. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.